started designing bicycles a long, long time ago. I had always wanted to make folding bicycles. I went to Pratt for industrial design and I was always intrigued with minimal things, doing as much as possible with as little material as possible and if possible, hiding it when you were done. So folding bikes were right up my alley. This is all chromoly. This bike was built in Harlem 25 years ago. Now this is a cargo tricycle built to carry up to 800 pounds of load plus the driver. That's a half a ton. I built my first pedicab out of recycled materials, then I developed a dumping tricycle for recycling programs called the Dump Trike. Well, this is a human-powered helicopter. It's actually intended to go below a parafoil. This is a tricycle for a street performer who uses a harp while sitting still and an accordion while pedaling. George sold my first folding bike. He sold most of the first 60 folding bikes. New York Magazine did an article. All of a sudden, the phone was ringing off the hook. I was discovered by Zooter Scooters. They were looking to get into the folding bike business. They built a standardized version of the Swift, brought them over from Taiwan by the container load, 400 bikes in a container. They were willing to uh, have frames fabricated for me as well so that I could continue doing custom builds, for, mostly for people in New York. And that's always what I lived for. And everything was going along swimmingly. City Bike came along as the hassle-free alternative to owning your own bike as an urban commuter and the business went in the toilet. This project, designing a human-powered vehicle to transport the disabled, came along and I had something to fly myself to again. When I was at Pratt, I worked with a guy named Curtis Brewer. He was a disability rights lawyer. He was quadriplegic and he was a very dignified fellow who was not about to put up with the poor design and the lack of dignity of the mobility aids that were available to him. He went to Pratt looking for a young design student who could build him what he wanted. I wound up being that guy. We were building a wooden mock-up for a wheelchair accessible taxi cab. And Curtis came, he was using a power chair he controlled it with a, a sip and puff chin controller. It was such an education on what design for differently abled people should be. I put good design for the disabled on hold for a while, but I swore I'd always come back to it. The pedicab project came through George, a friend of his was working on a wheelchair accessible pedicab that couldn't operate. What we were starting with was too short, too unstable. The first thing I did, short of starting the whole thing over, I made a load bed to make sure that everyone would be able to fit in this vehicle. This was the learning experience, seeing what we're starting with and where we can go from there. The rules for um, taxis and uh, paratransit vehicles require four of these tie-downs and so I started with that just to see what it would take to meet the regulations.
It makes so much sense to have people earning their living through using their bodies as the mode of locomotion. And the pedicab project exists because it needed to be a supplement to Accessoride and the yellow cabs that are wheelchair accessible. It's easy for a wheelchair to roll in under its own power, easy for the operator of the vehicle to secure them and get whoever is in that wheelchair to their destination and, you know, and dignity quickly. There are all kinds of places where if it was there, it could connect all the dots of what is accessible now.